Hey everyone, John Moran here with Solutions 8, and today we're going to be covering an issue that no one really knows about unless you're a good marketer. <laughs> and this is actually the offline importation of the conversion actions that happened post lead generation. And when you want to upload them back into Google Ads, I bet you didn't know this, but WBraid and GBraid, that is becoming more popular, which is the users that are coming from iOS devices. Those are actually not able to be imported with the standard GCLID parameter. Now, what this means is let's say you have a lead generation campaign and you want to upload those offline conversions back into Google Ads. And an example of this would be lead came in, you sold that lead, let's say a $10,000 item, and you want to put that back into Google so that you can see which lead inside of your ad groups, keywords, ads, campaigns, whatever it may be, generated that lead. Typically, this is an, an advanced strategy that good marketers use to identify where is a lead coming from that is actually also closing so that negative keywords can be added, bid adjustments can be made, ad copy can be updated, campaigns can have more or less ad spend, all of the ways that you want to optimize for those offline conversions when you upload those back into Google, unless you have a GCLID, you can't do it anymore. And we found this issue here, and I'll just kind of share screen and, and share with you what I'm looking at. There's actually now the marketing source is becoming WBraid more often. So there's GBraid and WBraid. And what, fortunately, what this is actually doing is telling you that these people are coming from iOS devices. And if you have, let's say, 100 leads, you might see that 20, 30, 40, 80, even sometimes 100% of them, if you're targeting a specific you know device like an Apple user, those can no longer be imported using the standard import feature. Let me share with you. If you go into a Google Ads account and you go over to conversions, the conversions here, oh, sorry, this can be a little bit slow. When you go into uploads and you want to upload those conversion actions, you're going to see this. You're going to view the template, conversions from clicks. You're only seeing three. So conversions from clicks, conversions from clicks, external attribution, unless if you're using an MCC account for your, for your attribution, and conversions from calls. When you look at the Google Sheet here, for example, you're going to see Google Click ID, GCLID. This is now the way that you have to have your uploads formatted. Well, what happens when you have WBraid? You can't stick the WBraid inside of here, it's simply going to say this GCLID has been altered or is invalid. So if you're uploading 100, you may only have 50 that actually may, may be imported. So WBraid cannot be used in this method. I have actually been scouring the internet for the last eight to 10 hours. Google forums, uh, forums, uh, Google like questions, Reddit. I cannot find anything about this. So that's why I'm sharing this with you today. So the way to actually upload a GBraid or a WBraid user is you have to have two fields. You have to have their email and you have to have their phone number. Those are two things that you have to capture before you can use this new method that apparently came out that no one knows about. So when you have a GBraid user, for example, in this, uh, this sheet here that I just called hidden, you have to have a few things. You don't have to have the first name, last name. You have to have the create date. You can pull this right out of your CRM tool or sheets or wherever you're storing your leads. You have to have a phone number and you have to have their email. So if you don't have their phone number, that's one of the required fields. And when you see the marketing source here, you don't even need to have the marketing source anymore. So like the GCLID where you have to upload the GCLID in this uh, field here, that is something that you have to have. Typically, all you had to have was the GCLID. You didn't even have their phone number, didn't need to have their email address. Upload the GCLID, the conversion name. Let's say you're using a secondary conversion action that's using the import from clicks conversion action feature. Then you have to have the time that it happened. It simply just have to happen sometime after the click took place. And then optional conversion value, conversion currency. It defaults to one in USD if you don't need it. So sometimes you don't want to have a conversion value to these people. Sometimes you really do. You want to say, hey, I made a $10,000 sale. I want to put that in the conversion value so that my value-based bidding strategies for lead generation campaigns are actually taking that, that value and applying it towards either a maximized conversion value or a TROAS goal. So... Now that G braid and W braid are becoming more and more prevalent, it seems that only about the last month or so, a lot, a lot of our leads are coming in with those, those parameters. That's actually what we've been seeing more and more about that I now can no longer upload until I discovered this. So inside of the back end of your account, inside of the, in the upload feature and the conversions, you see how it's not there anymore. We do not have uh, a fourth option in these three options here. We have to do is go into settings and in the settings you have to use this new feature here called enhanced conversions for leads when you click on that you have to turn on enhanced conversions for leads and it's going to say select an option as to which you'd like to use there's two options available google tag google tag manager 
If you're not sure which, which method to use of how your conversion tracking has been installed on your site or your tag has been installed on your site, you can actually ask Google of which method should you use. Now I'm going to grab our website here. Just give me one moment. Grab our website address. I'm going to go back over to here and I am going to add this here. So I'm going to check the URL. And give it a moment here. And it says Google Tag Manager is correctly installed on your website and can be used to detect user provided data. Excellent. So we're going to continue with Google Tag Manager. So we have the configure your tag and tag manager, collect the user provided data. This is actually where you're going to need to actually install the uh, enhanced conversions tracking. So you have to do this through Tag Manager. They do give you instructions here on how to implement this. And once you've implemented it correctly, there's parameters that you're going to have to capture. You can then go ahead and click save. Now, once you have enhanced conversions for leads turned on, this is the part that gets a little bit wonky. Sometimes it takes about um, two to three hours to actually show up, but I'm going to try it here live with you all and see if this works. Going back into the uploads area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh the page here. And using the templates here, we now have a fourth option. This fourth option is conversions from clicks, enhanced conversions for leads. Now what we see is the ability, and let me just make sure I can move this out of the way. I'm not sure it shows it on a different screen. So sometimes Loom gets a little bit messed up. Hopefully you all can see this, my apologies. But now you see a fourth option, conversions from clicks, enhanced conversions for leads. When you look at this Google sheet, the cool thing about this now is when you look at the make a copy for the spreadsheet template, use this template here, make a copy of it. And now it gives you a new template that you can use for offline conversion uploads. What you've seen here is that you need an email and you need a phone number. Now I have one already set up here, and this is the one that I've actually done already. And what you have to have is a hash generator. You can use any tool you want, but it has to be SHA-256. You have to use that hashing method of SHA-256. Whatever method you use, there's tools. Sometimes your CRM tool has it built in. Zapier has it built in. Whatever tool that you use, but you need to hash both the email and the phone number before you can send it into Google's upload. So for example, I'm just going to take you know email. I'll use my email here my phone number in case you all want to text me in the middle of the night weird things go ahead um actually do this here make sure it's not i forgot it doesn't have to it doesn't need the dashes so that's my email my phone number my conversion name is actually a secondary conversion action called quality lead when i upload them back into google i want to see where the leads came from versus where the quality leads came from so i can overlay both those identically and see okay if i generate 100 leads how many are quality off of that ad and that campaign that ad group with that keyword for example <clears throat> and the higher quality leads coming from your lead flow is going to understand where you're going to make those optimizations is it positioned too low am i using the wrong bidding strategy do i need to get more aggressive whatever the optimization may need to be this is a way for you to identify that but because it's ios the ios now is going to come with gbraid wbraid so use this method in order to then implement it so now what you have to do is take the email i'm going to use this hashing tool here to change this over to the SHA256, then generate this hex code here is gonna be your hashed email, replace that there. The phone number, gonna to have to do the same thing, SHA256, generate the phone number, hashed email here, grab that, paste that here. And now I can take this one here and upload this into the Google Ads account. The way that you do that is to go back into the Google Ads area here, select a source, Google Sheets, link an existing sheet but first what you have to do is share your sheet with the g service account so copy this account here then go into the um enhanced conversion here share it with that i've already done that so i'm just going to share with you how to do that you have to share with that account make an editor you don't have to notify them it's google share that here and then go back into google link that existing sheet here uh, I'm just going to use, is it going to have enhanced conversions for leads? Uh, there we go. So select this one. It's not going to work because obviously it's a test. I didn't click my own ad and generate myself. But what happens is you're going to see this applying and it's going to go from a 
a different kind of GCLID one to now enhance conversions for lead scheduled upload. So this is a way for you to actually take in leads that are coming into uh, your CRM tool, upload them to the sheet, hash them, and then upload them back into Google Ads if they're coming from the new GBraid and WBraid parameters, no longer using GCLIDs for Apple users, unfortunately. And a lot of people are saying, yes, well, it's actually from the people that are not signed into Google, your WBraid and GBraid, or they're using an iOS device, they're not using, um, they're not using a uh, like Chrome browser. There's a lot of people out there that are kind of giving false information, in my opinion, about when a GBraid actually shows up. And to share with you a kind of a, a test that I was running earlier here on my phone as a mobile device using an iOS, um, an iOS device. So I have an Apple phone here. It's a, it's a, an iPhone. I'm using Google Chrome. I'm signed in to Google. And actually up here at the top, I'm not sure if this is going to show up. Let me just see if it does. You'll see GBraid there. That GBraid is actually now the parameter. If I fill out a form on my own website, I would actually not get a GCLID anymore. Apple is really, really heavy coming into GBraid and WBraid. <clears throat> now, you see there's an error here. When you click on the error, it says, the click for this conversion cannot be found. This may be because the conversion did not come from Google Ads campaign. Correct, it didn't. If you try to upload a GCLID in that form, it'll just say the GCLID has been altered or is invalid. It will just deny it off the bat. This is now accepting a GBraid and WBraid user and saying, okay, did I find that? Now, here's some, some good and bads. Number one, you have to capture email, have to capture phone number. It doesn't need to be at the time of lead generation. But what this means is that sometime before you upload it back into Google, you have to have captured the email, the phone number. Great. Someone buys something from you for $10,000. You should have their phone number and their email. That is something that you're going to use in that sheet. Number two, you don't necessarily have to capture the GBraid and the WBraid. There actually isn't a feature to capture GBraid, WBraid, typically like how you would capture GCLID where you have to have a hidden field in a form or have to have a referring URL. You don't need it. But GBraid and WBraid cannot be uploaded through GCLID. It has to be uploaded through this method of matching the email address. The last and final thing is you're going to... Um, with capturing the email, it's going to be sort of susceptible to how Google's email match types are. So if you're looking at like a typical match rate of like 60 and 70%, it kind of falls into that as well. Meaning that if you upload 100 GBraid and WBraid users that are conversion actions into Google and Google says, hey, we match 70 of those, you're only really going to see 70% of your total list of GBraid and WBraid that you uploaded. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't tell you really inside of anything anywhere else but this this area here if it was matched or not it doesn't mean that it didn't come from google ads google just can't match it kind of like a customer upload list google may not just be able to even identify it so because it's not found doesn't mean it didn't come from there it's just susceptible now to the sometimes 60 70 80 90 percent match rates that google has with the users so this is the same method that google uses for enhanced conversions when you have enhanced conversions turned on and you have someone come through with a form field, it goes through enhanced conversions and say, do we see also the information that you saw? When Google says, yep, we tracked that person too. Good job. Here's your lead. It's the same engine that Google is using to upload these enhanced conversion for leads. When you upload those leads, it says, yep, we see that too. But now you can manually upload after the fact that a person went through and filled out a form. And maybe you sold them or whatever it is. <clears throat> so why is this important? Well, one thing is because GBraid and WBraid is coming out more and more and more, this is the method you're going to have to use if you want to upload those back into Google Ads. If they don't have a GCLID, you're dead in the water from the old method. Number two, performance max for lead generation sucks. It gets so much spam and so much junk traffic and bots and click farms that you really can't push through the noise. However, if you're using this method along with the GCLID method, you can only track the conversions that you upload. And now you can upload GCLID, WBraid, and GBraid, which WBraid and GBraid might be 60% of your offline conversions now because Apple seems to be switching over to it almost unanimously. And how many Apple users are there? <laughs> There's a lot. Not only in the mobile phone, but also on their desktop of their, of their well, I guess their, their Mac PC. So when we see this more and more and more coming out and you want to upload those back into it, Unless you're using a Google API from like Salesforce or call track and metrics or HubSpot and you want to upload them manually, this is the method that you have to use now. You just didn't know it was there because maybe you didn't see 
how to set up the enhanced conversions in the back end of your settings of your conversions. So if you're going to be using Performance Max, only count the quality leads. And now Performance Max is not just going to simply change its muzzle to the cliff farms because that's where conversions are coming from. You can actually upload all of the quality conversions. And now it shifts over there and says, aha, those are the people now that I have to go after and get rid of the spam and get rid of, well, not get rid of, heavily, heavily, heavily reduce the spam and the uh, bots and the, you know, the click farms that are plaguing your lead generation performance max campaign. Uh, that's it. I hope this tip works well for you. I hope that you can kind of follow along. And now if there's anybody out there that didn't know this was an issue, maybe look into the back end of your conversion offline importations and say, aha, that's why this GCLID is altered or invalid. Maybe you couldn't figure it out. Might be a G braid or W braid that you're capturing as a GCLID. Uh, yeah, like, comment, share, subscribe, tell your grandmother. And this is John Ram Solutions 8, and I appreciate it, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. We're going to dive right in. And the topic for today, the discussion topic, is going to be MER, Media Efficiency Ratio. And what MER is, Media Efficiency Ratio, is think of it like company ROAS. So all cash spend out on paid media versus all revenue in.